This video is brought to you by the Logitech Lightspeed wireless range of keyboards, mice and headsets, the benchmark in wireless gaming performance. This one has been highly requested. Immortals Phoenix Rising might just be one of the most ambitious titles to grace the Nintendo Switch, and it sets a major precedent for the system too. Here we have a game built on a more advanced form of the Anvil Next engine, the 2.0 version onwards if you like, as used in the likes of Assassin's Creed Origins, Odyssey and Valhalla. It's a first for Switch and developer Ubisoft Quebec tries something different with Immortals 2. Originally known as Gods and Monsters, there's more than a pinch of Zelda Breath of the Wild in here. The cell shaded aesthetic, the climbing and physics puzzles too, take inspiration, but it brings its own quality to the table too, the focus on combat and the building of a world based on Greek mythology really worked for it. It's a beautiful game on next-gen systems honestly, but again, can switch tackle it. To figure that out, I've invited none other than John Lindemann. How's it going? Hey Tom, nice to see some of your results here. Uh, I've only lightly played this game, but based on what I'm seeing here, um, it is pretty interesting. I think the big story for me at least is how they were able to scale this down for Switch because well, maybe we should start with the next gen because that's kind of the simplest thing here. Yeah, there's a lot of numbers and modes to go through. First thing I guess we've got to say is all the next gen systems, PS5, Series S and X, have a performance and quality mode toggle. Uh, the quality mode obviously pushes for higher resolutions while the performance mode is kind of the standard mode that uh, guns for 60 FPS. Okay, and it's worth noting though that because we're testing this later, we're actually looking at the most recent version of the game and it has changed. So at launch, the game was notorious. It had some weird like stuttering bugs on certain platforms and didn't look quite as smoothly as it should. It seems like everything has been corrected and based on the footage you're showing me here, it's uh, it's very, very stable. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really well optimized, at, the, at least at this point now. I know we're a little bit late to the party on this one <laughs> because we were uh, so busy with next-gen launch uh, coverage at the end of uh, 2020, but uh, here we are and I think the way it stands right now, it's uh, in a really good shape. So yes, there is a performance and a quality mode. To kind of summarize that, on PS5 and Series X, they both run at a dynamic 4K in the performance mode. That can kind of run the gamut from, say, 1440p or just under 1440p up to a full 4K, depending on where you're looking, the GPU load, all that sort of thing. I'd imagine they don't hit native 4K too often in this mode though. What did you find? No, you're right. It is a bit variable. It's this open world section where you can go anywhere, do anything, much like in Breath of the Wild, and it runs mostly about 1620p here, kind of as a baseline average, and that goes for both PS5 and Series X without too much to split them as far as I can see anyway. Okay, well that's pretty cool. So they're pretty comparable in performance mode, and I assume the quality mode or resolution mode as they might call it, uh, it just gets closer to, or maybe it locks at or near 4K most of the time. Yeah, pretty much. It's a locked 4K as far as I can tell. There may be occasional. But at 30 frames per second. It yeah, be yeah, that is the key. Um, so maybe we're jumping ahead a bit, but uh, there wouldn't be much of a reason, I don't think personally, to go for the quality mode. It looks sharper. It does look amazing, but at 30 FPS, you're missing out on a lot. I think 60 makes a lot more sense for this sort of game. Okay, so comparable on those machines, of course, but there's also Series S, which uh, also has the quality and performance modes available. So what do you get in performance mode then? I assume it tops out at like 1080p with DRS? Uh, basically, yeah, it's 1080p, DRS, 720p is the lowest number I've found. Again, you've got a quality mode though in this uh, on Series S, which takes you to 1440p, which feels like the natural target resolution for the system. And uh, that drops to a lowest of 1080p. So there's a lot of numbers here, I know. Uh, but yeah, 1440p to 1080p in the quality mode and 1080p to 720p in the performance mode, but you get 60 with that. So. That seems about what you would expect then, given the variation in platform differences. And I guess for Series X and PS5 especially, it sounds like it's in really good shape. So that's great. Okay, so we'll talk about performance momentarily. But I guess for me, the most curious and interesting thing here really is this Switch conversion. Because so this is the first big 
open world anvil next title that we've seen on the switch i know that they had promised steep for the switch for many years but that never materialized and i always wondered if maybe it was just uh, development difficulties with bringing this engine to the switch and well it seems like they've finally done it but there's definitely some pretty significant caveats from what i can see yeah it's a bit of a david versus the goliath situation when it comes to comparing switch to any of these next gen systems um i've it's a bit unfair really but it also highlights how close in some respects it does get um i think the aesthetic helps it a lot but obviously there are clear technical cutbacks to make any of this possible on switch obviously this is the engine that powered odyssey and they're going for a more sort of cartoon styled aesthetic and you can see like that a lot of the models are kind of stylized very chunky geometry which helps and i don't think you're going to pick out too much of a difference there but it's when it comes to the world yeah that's kind of what i've noticed as well like primarily everything at a distance is just scaled way back less complex geometry reduced texture detail everything sort of pulled in closer to the camera the density of the grass is reduced like the density of like everything so it's just they really bring that fidelity closer to the camera and just you know work on scaling everything down and you know i guess to a degree uh it's only when you do the side by side does it really stick out but i'd imagine that the lower resolution of the switch and given the platform it probably seems relatively acceptable for the platform that's that's the key yeah i guess the the nearest touchstone would be zelda breath of the wild and if you compare it to that well it's not too far off the mark is it i mean it looks pretty impressive all around and it's still got all the underpinnings of the game the framework of uh, how the physics work and there's obviously all the magnetism powers that you use on rocks to throw at enemies and uh, gravity-based puzzles all that stuff works just as it did it's interesting though like um seeing that the gap between switch and the new consoles it kind of takes me back to those days when we were comparing ps vita to the consoles at the time yeah it kind of does you know this like it has that that where it looks like remarkably close at a glance but the closer you look at the details you can really start to see where everything was kind of paired back to work on the platform and i love this stuff i think it's really fun to see the decisions that developers make to translate games like this it really shows the scalability of the engine as well i mean they kept a lot of stuff i mean depth of field during cutscenes still there uh the ssr screen space reflections are gone obviously shadow quality dropped but it's not to a ridiculous extent it's still passable okay so what about the uh resolution then resolution it is a dynamic 720p while docked on switch which i think is about right i think <laughs> if you compare it to some of the major AAA titles the most demanding stuff on switch that's probably the sort of target you'll have yeah and uh again we're getting ahead of ourselves a bit but um when the frame rate dips and it does unfortunately under 30 it's interesting to see that even with a dynamic 720p in place drs the actual resolution doesn't change a heck of a lot it's still 1280 by 720 a lot of the time yeah it seems like they favored resolution more than anything else and that the threshold for adjusting that resolution is set perhaps not as aggressively as you might expect yeah so you maintain the image quality at the expense of frame rate which we'll get into yeah definitely i, I found it really curious it can dip under but it's uh, not common in my experience and then we've got of course uh, the portable play and it is interesting to see actually it peaks at uh 504p that's 896 by 504 as the max resolution which is about you know using a sky test looking at the sky it's about 70 percent on each axis of 720p so it's a good kind of uh it runs in accordance with how the gpu clocks scale within the switch as well that makes sense but again it's dynamic and it drops just under that as well but it's not very aggressive much like the uh, docs play okay so i think we have a pretty good handle then on this situation visually so perhaps we should talk about performance then let's start with the next gen consoles i guess because the story there is relatively straightforward looking at the the results here i think so it is 60 fps as standard obviously it boots with the performance mode on and i think that's pretty much the recommendation we should really stress that this is a hard game to buckle but i think much like uh, you and perhaps alex found with valhalla there's some flashes of tearing that creep in 
So yeah, you can be playing at 60 FPS perfectly, no issues whatsoever. And by looking at the sky, you do trigger a higher DRS value. But by looking down sharply, you suddenly incur a lot of load on the engine and the console. And at that point, the game has to play catch up, or it seems to, and that appears to incur a kind of flash of tearing. It seems to simply require the engine to adjust the resolution more rapidly than it can. And so you lose some frames while it catches up. But by and large, I mean, honestly, this is, it is comparable to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but I think it seems to be more stable overall because that game also would have tearing creep in once in a while with its DRS solution not keeping up always. But here it looks like it holds steadier most of the time outside of those rare instances where you look towards the sky and trigger a little bit of tearing here and there. And that's true on both PS5 and Xbox Series X, I believe. That's right. So there's not much to split the two in any real practical stress test or side by side. Um, they both have the same issue with uh, looking up at tall buildings and then back down to heavy load areas. But it is really, again, well optimized on everything on the next gen side. And the same even goes for Series S. And of course, there is that 30 FPS mode on all three systems with a higher resolution target. Not much to say on this one, honestly. There's, um, it just runs perfectly at 30, no drops whatsoever. For most of gameplay, it's just going to be impossible to drop that, whether it's on PS5, Series X, Series S. I'm flashing between them all now, hopefully in the edit. <laughs> but yeah, it's really solid. Okay, okay. So I kind of feel like the takeaway here then is that I would say Ubisoft's done a really nice job here on these platforms where you have this big, lush, open world game. You have the choice between... 60 and 30 fps depending on whether you value sharper image quality or not but in all cases i guess all six permutations it seems like they pretty much always hit the target and for such an unpredictable kind of open world experience like that even if this game has shipped on last gen platforms as well i think it's something to be lauded it's uh, it's really great to see but obviously from beauty comes pain if you're playing on the switch uh and i guess this is this is kind of the big caveat here with the switch version is that it just seems to be a little bit too much for the switch console compared to like zelda breath of the wild and such uh the frame rate is not very stable though even Bre breath of the wild had you know a lot of gameplay at 30. sure i think this one is a step below that in overall consistency maybe it's just more ambitious in what it's trying to go for. There's a lot more. Well, I mean, it's a it's a multi-platform game, to be fair, whereas Breath of the Wild was originally built up for the Wii U, of all things. So it, it makes a lot of sense the way they, that runs on the Switch. But this one, looking at the numbers here, I guess the best comparison point is that it kind of reminds me of maybe the PS360 era of some of the later Assassin's Creed games. Maybe a little better than that, but it's kind of comparable, where those games rarely ever held at 30 frames per second during normal gameplay. It's maybe expected, and like you say, PS360 is a good parallel to draw. It's not exactly like for like, this is obviously, Switch feels like a step above those. I think it's going to be a hard sell to play it on a TV like this, but if you're looking at Switch as a portable console, then it does actually make a bit more sense, I think. Frankly, I've never really enjoyed playing multi-platform games on Switch. It doesn't make much sense to me where there's a better option available. You know, at a push, this is just about playable, but to really get the most out of the Switch version, that there is that portable play where it's again 20 to 30 FPS, and it's, you know, much more bearable on a small screen to have those drops. But no matter which way you play, there is still 20 to 30 FPS. There are frame pacing issues as well, even when it hits that 30 FPS cap. You know, there's, there's something that could be done on that front at least. But as far as the rest of it, I do feel like there's just so much going on on screen. There's so much they have to achieve in terms of NPC counts, enemies, the physics side of things, the draw distances that are necessary to render the world and make it satisfying to explore. All that stuff kind of has to come together all at once on what was comparably a more GPU limited machine. So I think they've done a really, you know, a respectable job, all things considered. It's not ideal by any means, but I, I do respect it. I mean, again, when you consider that this is, you know, 
older mobile hardware. It's a mobile platform. I think it's pretty impressive what they've done here. Yeah, it's a really interesting experiment, I think. And also it does, as I say, set a precedent for what could come later. Different types of games, other games built on Anvil next. Well, let's just hope that there's a, some kind of enhanced switch in the works. I'll say that much because I, I really get the feeling that we're starting to approach that point, especially with the new consoles arriving that you know, the original Switch is perhaps it's just not quite where it needs to be to handle games like this. One last thing I think worth touching on, as far as the playability of this game goes, you've got a fast travel option in there as well, uh, which does mean, you know, there's some loading between areas. You can obviously load saves uh, afresh. So I did a test and the fact is loading times on the next-gen consoles comes in at about 12 13 seconds uh, not much to split them ps5 is just a hair ahead but the bigger issue is switch does take about 44 seconds oh. to load the exact same area I, I will say this is like loading the save uh, from the menu so the loading times i guess that's honestly to be expected and and really looking at the results on the next-gen consoles it does feel a little bit slower than I would have expected there as well, which suggests that they're perhaps not fully exploiting uh, the new compression techniques and tools available to really push those machines. We've seen some exceptionally fast loading in other games, but that's fine. This is a cross-gen game. I, I doubt it was developed from the ground up for those, obviously, but the Switch numbers, not great, but kind of expected. I come away from this game thinking this is impressive regardless. It's uh, one of the bigger projects to hit Switch even with that multi-platform status, it actually achieves a lot that most sort of exclusive games don't. In the world size, in the overall polish, I'd say, in how it's delivered. I know frame rate isn't perfect, but it, it ranks up there as one of the more technically ambitious games on the system. Okay, yeah. And then obviously, like we said before, the next-gen version's looking excellent. So it looks like you can't go wrong on that if you're interested in playing this game. So, cool. Right, well, I think that about covers everything. There was a lot, to, a lot of ground to track, but thanks very much for taking this journey with me, John. Sure. And uh, let's do a wrap up here. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to get notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our patron at digitalfoundry.net and to get in touch with myself, John, or the rest of the team, just use Twitter. But from the both of us for now, thanks for watching. A gaming icon evolved, Logitech's renowned G502 mouse joins the ranks of the world's most advanced gaming mice with the release of the G502 Lightspeed. Featuring ultra-fast wireless connectivity and reliability, with performance trusted in competition by eSports pros. Featuring the next generation Hero 25K sensor and PowerPlay compatibility, this is the ultimate rendition of the celebrated G502 mouse.